The hunt for the 2022 NASCAR Pinty Series Championship has come to the West. Edmonton International Raceway hosts 20 NASCAR late models tonight on TSN. Last week, the 74 of Kevin Lacroix outpaced the field and outdueled Andrew Ranger on the streets of Toronto. It was Lacroix's second win in Toronto, but more importantly, he now has control on the points lead. Now the NASCAR Binti Series makes its return to Edmonton. This is a little rock'em, sock'em speed blend that's going to play a big role in the 2022 championship battle. Welcome to the sixth race of the NASCAR Pinty Series. We're in Wetasco in Alberta for the Bayer 300. Hello and welcome to Edmonton International Raceway, a little quarter mile track nestled amongst the canola fields. I'm Dave Bradley, along with me is Adam Ross, Todd Lewis's track side. But Adam, this is the first stop of the Western Swing for the NASCAR Pinty Series, and it comes to a track owned by Ron and Loretta Thiering, who have done a load of work over the years at this place. These are hard working folks, Dave, and this is a tough, tough little quarter mile racetrack. The driver who succeeds tonight is going to be someone who conserves their brakes, conserves their tires, and maybe even saves a little front bumper for late in the race. And they may need it for sure. Coming out of Toronto, a bit of a shake up in the point standings, though. Kevin Lacroix, your new leader, just by three points over Mark Antoine Cameron. Then in third, you have Gary Clute, Tagliani, Lapsovich round out the fast five. But at this point in the season, it is still anybody's game. It's a wide open championship chase, and as we look deeper through the top five and the top ten, we've got a few oval track specialists who will circle this West Coast swing because the two oval tracks that they race on when they come out west always play a pivotal role in who wins the championship in a given season. When the tour does come out west, quite often you'll see a number of the local NASCAR stars come out to join the NASCAR Pinty Series, and that certainly is the case here today. And with more on that, let's send it down to Todd Lewis. Todd? Thanks, guys. Whenever we come west, it's always great to have some Western Canadian participants, including Chantelle Kalika, who's coming up and going to make her 11th NASCAR Pinty Series start. Tough to jump into this situation. What'd you learn in practice that you'll employ in the race tonight? Oh, you know what? I feel like we were kind of all over the place in practice, but um, at the end of the day, we're just going to try to make it to the end, and we're going to do what we can, and we're going to be there, and I think it's going to be a lot of bumping, banging, and the fans are really going to love it. Um, we're going to put on a good show, like we always do. It's a NASCAR Pinty Series. Right? Yeah, you got it. Thanks, Chantel. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, good luck. Chantel Kalika from Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. We'll roll off tonight. And also participating from the West, Grand Prairie, Alberta's Jamie Krizik, who qualified in the 13th spot, but decided, you know what, we can make a few adjustments. We think we can make this car better. They'll go to the back of the field to start, but at the end of 300 laps tonight, they think they're going to be in pretty good shape. Continuing the march forward towards the front of the field, we had a lot of exciting qualifying. And on pole tonight, the 11th pole of his career, it is Alex Tagliani, who scored the pole position with a time of 12.876 seconds, a speed of 69.8 seconds in E3 spark plugs qualifying. Alex Tagliani will lead them to the green tonight in the Bayer 300 when we come back to Edmonton International Raceway. The sixth race of the 2022 NASCAR Pinty Series season on TSN is brought to you by Pinty's, making great food fun. By E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. By Fast Eddie Speedwear, get geared up. And by AGI, a global leader in the world's food infrastructure. Beautiful afternoon here, Dave, in Wetaskiwin, Alberta. This this is the field of dreams of race car tracks, right in the middle of the field, but what a great little place. It is, but little, you have to underscore that, because a lot of the drivers saying that you're going to get into lap traffic very, very quickly. So that's weighing on their minds here today. And with the number of cars in this race, it is going to get crowded out there on the racetrack, and that always leads to frustration. So the drivers are strapping themselves in. We're moments away from the words. Let's send it down trackside. We had the local mayor, the local Reeve, and a whole gang from Bayer out here to give the command for that. 
lot of enthusiasm for this event. It's been years we're excited to be back. Yeah, some people came, they had tickets for 2020, and of course the pandemic put an end to that. They still wanted to be here today, and they're in the crowd. We'll have a number of great onboard shots here today, including on board the three, a Western Canadian driver, Brett Taylor. Great to have Brett Taylor back. He missed the event in Toronto. We're gonna to be on board with Chantel Kalika in the AGI Dodge. There's a good look at Justin's Rookie of the Year contender, Brandon Watson. He's looking for a good run here today. So is the other Rookie of the Year contender, J.P. Bergeron, looking for a breakthrough performance. The field starts to roll here on the front straight away. We'll get a look at your E3 spark plugs starting lineup. There is your pole sitter, the 18 Alex Tagliani. He'll start alongside the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Row number two will have DJ Kennington and Raphael Lassard, so a couple players up at the front. A surprise in the fifth starting spot. Mark Antoine Cameron got no practice today, went out and qualified fifth. That was impressive. Trayton Lapsovich sixth, then Brandon Watson and Gary Clute make up row four. Row number five has Mark Dilley in the 64. There's Andrew Ranger, surprisingly further back in the 27. Donald Teach drives the 80, and LP Dumoulin has a win here in Edmonton. He's got some work to do today. Jimmy Krizik in the 46, Brett Taylor in the three. We're seeing how deep this field is. J.P. Bergeron in the one, Dexter Stacy in the 92. And we take a look back to row number nine, and that's where we find Chantal Kulika in the 43. Brian Cathcart, another rookie in the field, driver of the 71. Wallace Stacy, yet another rookie in the 66. He'll start alongside Glenn Styers. Great field of cars have come west for the first of three events on the annual Western Swing. And like we said, Dave, everyone is just so excited to get back to a more traditional Pinty Series schedule. It's the Bayer 300, but it will be a brake race as we take a look at your E3 Spark Plugs race analysis. Perfect weather for the drivers, 23 degrees Celsius, not a cloud in the sky. Andrew Ranger won the event last time we were here. And that's why I mentioned a little bit of a surprise. He struggled in qualifying, but expect him to be there at the end. Let's check in with Todd before we go green. Guys, a couple of penalties will send drivers to the back. The 46 we mentioned in the opening made an adjustment. They will start at the back. And the 47 had a tire issue with the right rear. Rather than start on a questionable tire, they took the penalty, make the change. They, too, going to the back. So important for these drivers. Scrub those tires, get some temperature, get the debris off of them. Things happen in a hurry here, Dave. It's probably going to be a race to the bottom of the track, but you have to wait till you have an opening. We have seen in the past that the second groove does open up, but it's never until late in the running as the field will line up two by two. We get set behind the Edmonton International Raceway pace car. So Alex Tagliani will be in control of the field once the pace car heads to the pits. Young Aiden Roche about to wave the green flag. This has got to be a thrill for him as the field bunches up in three and four. He's staring down 20 NASCAR Pinty Series cars. There he is with the green, slowly off of four. Green flag waves and we're underway. Outside, clear. Coming back, at your bumper. Clear all around, good job, bud. Good launch for Alex Tagliani, but Kevin Lacroix as well. Critical to get right to the bottom. You don't want to waste too much energy in these opening laps, having to fight for position. So the top three, nose to tail, settled right in. Cameron at the 96, same thing, single file into fourth. Look at Lassard. That is the problem with starting up along the outside. When you get shoved up there, there's a, generally a freight train that comes through down low. He managed to find a hole and get down in that easy clean number eight. These racers are so good at what they do, but it really is a rhythm thing and a maneuver you have to do to get to the bottom. The spotter is heavily involved, but as you work your way back through the field, it's a chain of events that always is going to cost the car on the outside positions. Have a look inside, inside. Inside, at your bumper. Inside, still there, just to your bumper. Wow. That's calling Livingston, the spotter for Alex Tagliani, up to his bumper, now by his door, as Kevin Lacroix goes to top spot. Little small hole behind DJ. Shorter door, DJ. Get out there, bud. Given the vital information, but you'll notice the calm tone in his voice, and the best spotters are like that. Give the information, but don't give any reason for your driver to get excited. The idea is to keep them calm and keep them informed. And you have to think, too, it is still really early, just 
We're coming up on eight laps complete of a scheduled 300. You don't want to build that excitement too early and risk tearing up equipment. You remember one of the first races when we were out here? It might have been the very first race. Let's ride on board for a second with J.P. Bergeron. Wow. Oh, he goes around hard on the brakes. I don't think he had help in the Prolon controls, number one. Right over to the ignitions, which I, I can't believe we haven't gone yellow. He sits on the infield in turn number four. And we stay green, so the one is now officially one lap down, and it doesn't take long to be put a lap down here on this quarter-mile oval. And you can see it's out just ahead of the race leader, Kevin Lacroix, so he's almost two laps down. It's all good. No pressure out back. We're about one and a half. Back to the 92. We're going to lap 10. Long way to go here. So you can see Lacroix out in front. He has the Castro Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington. And you know DJ Kennington's going to be looking further ahead. He's going to try and use that one car as a way to get around and into the lead. If he can. Lacroix will probably have something to say about that. He will so, but you can see right now Kennington is sizing him up. Wow, I was just going to say, <laughs> you don't see much bumper use from Kennington. But, but even when you do, you'll rarely see a mark on that 17 car. He just knows exactly where that front bumper is and exactly what he wants to accomplish. Big news coming out of the 74 camp this week, though. New sponsor signing on, a long-term deal. It'll debut at the Grand Prix of 20 Behind. Do, do we give that hint? It's been announced, hasn't it? It has been announced. It's out there. The, the Napa blue and white going to be on that 74 machine, so it'll be a brand new paint scheme. The car looks beautiful from what I've seen. Tagliani caught in that outside groove in the NTN Viagra St. Hubert number 18. You see the Paillet number 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron and the 9 of Brandon Watson sneaking through down low. What I had started to say earlier about one of the first trips we made out here to Edmonton was that Tagliani led almost the entire race, but he didn't yet have the stop. Oh, contact between Gary Clute and Alex Tagliani. He didn't win that race. Andrew Ranger won that race. Oh, that contact resulted in some big damage to the front of that Chevrolet. Look at the bodywork dangling on the Alex Tagliani machine. It won't cause him too much trouble unless that fiberglass actually gets under the tire. That can obviously affect your, the traction he will get. Have another look at what happens. 59 down low. It really, it wasn't much contact. It looked almost like Tagliani got loose on the outside and gathering it up. Just a little bit of contact, enough to rip that fiberglass away. Talk about it all the time. It's what I love about this series. It's not going to cause him any speed at all. There is no aero effect to these race cars. We ride on board Trayton Lapsovich, a young man who's really made a name for himself coming from Ontario. We're about to see another young man from Ontario who I think is going to turn some heads. Yeah, Kyle Steckley will debut at Saskatoon at Sutherland Automotive Speedway for the very next race. That's pretty exciting news coming out of the 22 racing camp. Kyle Steckley has been running late models in the APC series and at Delaware Speedways. Racked up several wins, but it's going to be really interesting to see him behind the wheel of an NASCAR Pinty Series car. Brandon Watson with a move to the inside. Hold it there. Outside. Clear, followed by the 17 on your bumper. Well, information getting to these drivers. There's a lot to navigate. Check it out. Come on. Slow down here. Come on. Outside with the nine now, outside. You can see Glenn Styers on the inside. It looks like Bergeron is a little bit quicker, but with the leaders going by on the outside, you can't risk making a three wide. He is showing so much patience, but it has to be frustrating. This team brought two race cars out west. The one they're going to run in Edmonton or in Saskatoon, Dave, is brand new. It has never seen the racetrack. They didn't want to debut it here in Edmonton. It's a risk. When you run here at Edmonton, as Glenn Styers is finding out a little bit of bumper tank, but that car that they will debut at Saskatoon is a Mustang bodied car. So we're starting to see more of the Ford Mustangs make an appearance. And a lot of the, the diehard manufacturer fans will love to hear that, Dave. Absolutely. Great to see the Camaro now in the series. Of course, you have the Dodge Challenger, the Mustang. 
The uh, Ford Fusion still looks like a really good model, but Pinty Series cars looking top notch here in 2022. There's some sharp looking race cars on the track this season. I mean, we have never seen the field so deep. It is fun to, perfect timing. You see the whole racetrack and it is basically full of stock cars. Yeah, it's a battle on the track no matter where you are. We'll be back with more from Edmonton. Welcome back to the NASCAR Pinty Series here on TSN into the Bayer 300 at Edmonton International Raceway in Wetaskiwin, Alberta. And we continue under green, and look at this battle. Raphael Lassard outside. 47 looking inside at your wheel. 47 there at your wheel. Three wide, you're in the middle. Three wide in the middle. No middle. Stay there, stay there. Stay with the one car. That's it, two wide. They're on the outside. Mark Patrick Waugh, the spotter for Donald Teach, I think the best piece of advice, he told Donald exactly what was going on. Had yeah. Donald not heard that, you go up or down, you're wrecking. But the advice to stay with the one. That one is dedicating what, what lane you can run in, right? If they're too wide, you're in a lane. He almost went three wide again, going to the outside of the 71 of Brian Cathcart, but you can see now the 47 and the 8 took advantage of that slower traffic sure. and completed the passes. Because I guess the point to make, there is not three lanes yeah. here. So if you line up behind a car in front of you that's too wide, one of you is not in a lane, and it's <laughs> the one who's not behind another car. You're probably going to get up into the marbles outside in that far lane and likely be looking in the wrong direction as we ride on board Drayton Lapsovich in the 20. I really felt like this is a track Brandon Watson should excel on. Really, Trayton Lapsovich as well. It has a lot of characteristics of the Southern Ontario speedways that they would race on, whether it's Flamborough, Sobel, uh, Peterborough. You really get low down, get to the bottom of the racetrack. So I think these drivers, this should be right up their alley. There is your race leader, though, in the ESR wheels, number 74, Kevin Lacroix, working around the outside of the Oshwegan Speedway, zero of Glenn Styers. And this is really a trial by fire track for some of these rookies who have never seen a place like this before. Limited amount of practice and just go. Here's the deep end. Yeah, when we go to an onboard, listen to the back straightaway. They're just not able to get all the way onto the throttle. So it's very much, you have to be ginger on the throttle, a little bit harder on the brakes, but that gas pedal is not your friend here. Well, we call it an oval, but realistically, it's almost a circle for these drivers because you never really straighten up that wheel. Well, let's have a look here, Brandon Watson. Okay, Trayton Lapsovich is gonna show us around. He had the wheel straight at the start finish line. Saw, saw, saw the wheel, still saw the wheel. He's not gonna have the wheel straight again until he gets to the start finish line. And even then it's for about one second. Yeah, and especially when you're trying to weave your way through lap traffic while holding another car behind while chasing DJ Kennington, who's currently in the third spot in the 17. And, and when we say saw, it means you're sawing on the wheel. You're moving your arms back and forth. Any kind of noise like that in the race car uh, generally will slow you down. You want to have the least amount of steering wheel input as you can. That's a fast lap. Sometimes it can't be helped. Outside. Outside. There. Sparta for Mark Antoine Cameron, the 96 is Cameron has snuck through and has taken the lead now in the GM by oh, number 96. There. Good job, B1. It hadn't even come up on timing and scoring yet because that's only at the start finish line. So Cameron sneaking up there. And again, a driver that did not get to practice. They had to work on that car all afternoon. And I think that's something you have to underscore. That car is very, very quick. And it looks settled. I think it's fair to say that 96 has been the car to beat all season long. Whether an oval or a road course, they've really been at the top of the game. There's a ton of cars that are very, very close, but 96 is setting the bar so far this season. Quick ride on board the North Country property maintenance number three of Brett Taylor going a lap down, but now trying yeah, to keep in touch. You get a caution, you're the first car locked down. Watching the line Cameron's running, it almost reminds me of the year that Tagliani led most of the race. He's running that car too tight off the corner. He's not coming up to the wall, and that could hurt him later on. By using all of the racetrack, come off the corner, go all the way to the wall, go all the way to the bottom, the more you can arc those turns and run that big smooth line, the less you work the right front tire on the race car. 
part-time racers here in the Pinty Series. Chantal Kalika in the AGI Dodge, letting the leaders go through. And again, tucking in. She's going to school, trying to learn as much as she can with every single lap. We'd love to see more of Chantel race with this series. She's such a good ambassador for the sport. Always a great interview. Riding on board the Castrol Edge, Cathcart Trucking, CI Metals, and number 17 of DJ Kennington. And there you can see a smooth wheel. You talked about sawing, that's smooth. Very calm, less, less input. And he's not setting the world on fire. He's three seconds off the lead, but he knows. It's lap 61 out of 300. What am I gonna prove by driving the car harder and being forced to work that steering wheel? I'm gonna hang in just like this and wait till it counts. Oop! Oh, Bergeron cuts down. He didn't want to let that gap get too big. You see the 80 of Donald Teach is also a lap down to your race leaders. That's a bit of a surprise. He was quick in practice earlier on today. So something amiss in the early going, but they have that halfway break where they can make extensive adjustments if they need to. And you have to ride it out. Anyone who's been around this series knows you go down a lot, you can get it back. A lot of drivers will get laps back through the free pass. Stay high in the front stretch. Stay high. And here we go. We're under yellow. Looks like Wallace Stacy in the 66 who's gone around. And the bully's truck stop Chevrolet comes to a rest on the front straightaway. This is our first caution flag of the day, believe it or not. Thought we'd see more of those. 20 cars doesn't sound like a huge difference from the 17 that, that we might have been here with before 18, but it is. It just puts that many more cars on the racetrack. Have another look at what happened. Way up the top of your screen, you're going to see Wallace all by himself, just under throttle, get a little bit loose. And around he goes, but this will give an opportunity for some drivers to come down pit lane if they so choose. That's a great shot from our drone camera. And you can see nobody around Wallace Stacy as the three of Brett Taylor, the first to come down pit lane to get adjustments. Yeah, the driver from Calgary, Alberta, last time we saw him on our Noble, he crashed hard in Newfoundland, just beyond the green flag. Saw a glimpse of your race leader, Mark Antoine Cameron, came in second in points. He's tops in the race right now. The track here at Edmonton International Raceway has been a member of the NASCAR Weekly Touring Series since 2005. Today plays host to the NASCAR Pinty Series. And what a race we have so far here in the Bayer 300. It'll be Mark Antoine Cameron who will lead them back to green as they reach the front straightaway. Mike Charest waves the green flag over the field. They're off into turn number one. Cameron with that preferred inside groove. DJ Kennington trying to get up behind the race leader to not leave Lacroix hole to get down. It's interesting to see Lacroix. He's one of the more aggressive drivers in the Pinty series and the Lacroix tuning number 74. See if he can make the outside lane work. He's really become a tactician of sorts, which was never his style. His style was always <laughs> to muscle that race car, amazing skill behind the wheel and get out front. But now we'll see him settle in once in a while. But you know by the end of a race, you're going to have to talk about Kevin Lacroix. Oh, he's he's still full send, Kevin Lacroix. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> he's got it in him. Outside, still out there. Just out there, still out there. DJ Cannington working in that battle for second spot. You see Brandon Watson tucked in behind. Nine looking, nine looking, clear. Duck Devine, the spotter for DJ Kennington, tell him what's up. But we've got Mark Dilley with problems at IHL Leland 64. Looks like a right front tire down on the 64. It comes to a stop down the back straight away. Could not get down to pit lane. Now he finally has the opening that he needs. He'll get there. And even still, he's not going too quickly. The leader's in turn number two. Let's go down, Todd, standing by. Todd? We saw that issue with the 64 car. He was drifting back, and it is that right front tire that the crew goes to work on. Mark Dilley along pit row for a right front change. And they're awfully close to that pit wall, so the crew working in close quarters. That is a short wall, but it does affect your jacking ability, so you have to be careful. But earlier, another event held here as part of the NASCAR Pinty Series weekend, and it was the Mini Cup Division, a strong field of young boys and girls here at Edmonton, and what a show they put on. It was exciting racing. It was exciting announcing by the local track announcers. I mean, it was it was on point. 
Really was. And it's a quarter mile, so it's short for the Pinty series, but this is like Talladega for these cars. There's a lot of drafting involved in this, and the, the idea of that racing is don't give up the bottom. But fun to watch those youngsters out there competing. Sometimes they were forced to give up the bottom with a little bumping, but you have a good look at the number 71 of Brian Cathcart. Now he's a rookie in the NASCAR Pinty series this year but he is a driver with a lot of pedigree and he has done so much to help other drivers in this series. He's done amazing things for the sport. He's been behind the wheel for decades, but he's been a part of the sport in a much greater capacity. Also, a huge part of the hockey scene in Peterborough, Ontario. And we should say, at his home track in Peterborough, multi-time late model champion. So he has some trophies and now he's having some fun here in the NASCAR Pinty Series as we get back to green. Mark Antoine Cameron, that preferred inside groove. DJ Kennings, and they'll make it a good job on the outside. You can see cars still lined up two by two for the first two rows back. Unable to settle in as the Whoa. 17 tries to go to the inside. Contact there with the 74. Little wiggle there, but DJ gets down to the inside. Holy moly, Brandon Watson right up to the outside wall of that number nine. He's battling with Gary Clute, but he's sticking a nose up the outside of Kevin Lacroix for third. Gary Clute has been one of those drivers in the new Techwood number 59 who has been quietly solid all season long here in 2022 and a lot of people saying a win is not far off here this season this is one season where i think consistency is going to pay off in the championship we've got a history in the series of dominating performances whether it was andrew ranger or dj kennington or scott stackley this season it just feels different to me dave saw the hole opened up by the 74 of kevin lacroix underneath dj kennington now kennington caught in that outside groove he might just back up there's a hole behind the 59 and he'll want to get down that's exactly what he does rafael lassard in the number eight working alongside brandon watson in the nine Lassard hasn't found the speed in that eight machine he's been looking for yet this season, but perhaps today is the day for that race team. There's a first glimpse of the number 47, the WeatherTech Donks, as we ride on board with LP Dumoulin. Interesting to note, he has the best average finish of any driver in this field. He's finished an average of 2.5 in his six races so far here at Edmonton International Raceway. That's an impressive statistic. Believe it or not, he's only led 18 laps, too. So he does have a win, but he's always sort of been hunting at the front of the field. Look at him use the flat part of the racetrack down on the sidewalk portion. It's concrete, but it seems to be helping that car turn. It definitely will. You could see Andrew Ranger from his onboard get down onto the flat. You see the pitch of the car change just like it did right there. And it does. Right in the center of the corner, it'll help that car rotate. And it'll de-wedge the car just a little bit and make it work just a little bit better as we continue two by two. Every driver looking for just fractions of a second for an advantage. Brandon Watson looking for the fourth spot on DJ Kennington. Kennington left the door open. And DJ will do that. If you get close enough, his spotter will talk to him. Doug Devine, hey, car looking low. DJ knows this isn't the time. Car looking low, let him look low. It's funny, you and I were thinking the same thing because I was going to say it's classic DJ Kennington. Still early in the race, lap 95. What's the point of banging the fenders off? Great side-by-side -side battle. LP Dumoulin is just doing his thing, but he's really having an effect on the race behind him between Andrew Ranger and Trayton Lapsovich as Lapsovich slides down right in front of Alex Tagliani. You need the hole coming off. You need the 27 if you want it. You got a hole low now. Take it. There you got the 18 of the bumper. You're clear. There. There my half. Ken Kutu telling Trayton Lapsovich, I mean, you've got the savvy veteran spotter in Ken with the young racer Trayton Lapsovich. I love that combination. And look at Lassard now. It looks like the 17 has fallen off just a little bit. So DJ Kennington might not be all that happy with the handling of this car. So he'll be hanging on for that halfway break as now Raphael Lassard has found some speed in that easy, clean, fast Eddie speed where number eight as oh. they make contact. A little bit of rubbing there off the corner. 
and Rafael Lazard able to gather the car up, but it allows LP Dumoulin to look to the outside in that 47 machine. Even if LP didn't want to make that move, <laughs> he had to go somewhere. Yeah, exactly. There was no room at the end for sure. And the 17 of Kennington is reporting that car is very, very tight. So our spawners from NASCAR on TSN picking that Side. up on the scanners. Side. Side. Ooh. When you rub Clear. fender to fender, you can just drive along and it gets the cars a little wiggly. Once you touch tires, rubber on rubber, it's a much more dynamic reaction. And you have to be careful not to affect the toe of the cars, the front end. For Whoa, Rafael Lazardis, we have a car stopped in turn number four. It is the three of Brett Taylor. And I think he's looking to get straight down to pit road. He's got a right yeah. front tire down on that three machine. Yeah, you can see the tire is flat. I don't think Taylor hit anything. Have another listen. Nope, he can hear it, so he knows. Immediately knocks that car out of gear. You can see him looking to the left. Your visibility is not great out the left side window with these full containment seats. You got to trust your spotter, Jamie Krizik, had a windshield full of that three car. Brett Taylor, that right front tire is flat. That's what had him up against the wall. Crew making the change now. Jack underneath, car up in the air. They'll make the switch. Brett Taylor just can't catch a break this season. It has been a tough, tough year for the driver from Calgary, Alberta. New partner in North Country Maintenance. They had real high hopes coming into the season. Well, you never know. Still a lot of laps left to be completed here at Edmonton International Raceway. We'll return with more on TSN. We continue under caution here in the Bayer 300 at Edmonton International Raceway for a problem involving the three car of Brett Taylor. He has things sorted, tagged onto the tail of the field, and we're set to go back to green as the leaders head back onto the front straightaway. Mark Antoine Cameron continues to lead the way, but Kevin Lacroix really did a good job up on the high side. Look at Gary Kluth there now in the 59. He has a nose poked in on the inside of the 74 of Gary Kluth. They might have robbed in turn four as well. He slid up the track quite a bit there in turn four, but they both sort of ran it up towards the wall. They had just enough room as we are under yellow once again. Cautions, great cautions, and this time it's for the 27 of Andrew Ranger. He goes around in turn number one. And this could be another tire problem as well. Yeah, I'm sure it's a tire problem. Went down, Rangers spun that car out, and now we'll have to ride around. Let's, ha let's have a look at the replay. Right at the very back, he's up at the top of the yeah. screen. He knew he had a problem right from the start. And there you can see, as soon as he started to turn in, the back end went around. So likely a, a tire down, yeah, and a right front tire going on. So a new emergency tire going on to the GM Pie number 27. And he'll get back to the racetrack, but are they going to stop him? He may have lost a lap right there as we look at Dexter Stacy in the pits for a chassis adjustment. Not too far away from the halfway break, but drivers taking advantage of this caution period to make some minor adjustments, some tweaks as we get set to go back to green. So a quickie caution with Mark Antoine Cameron and Kevin Lacroix once again leading it back to green. The crowd out here is absolutely loving this race. I mean, they have been boisterous, they've been loud, they're having a lot of fun. And speaking of the crowd, we have to give a tip of the hat to Laps for MD with two VIP families in attendance here today. If you're unclear as to what Laps for MD is, a dollar for every lap led from participating drivers goes to muscular dystrophy. Brad Miller is the architect behind that. He's here today hoping to get out to more NASCAR Pinty Series events in 2022. It's a fantastic cause. As we look at DJ Kennington's struggle on the outside, up in that high groove, Tagliani's gone by. Man, oh man, the cars are fanning out everywhere. Inside, there you go, all good. Clear, clear, clear. Well, that was a little piece of robbery from Brandon Watson, you saw the 59 and 74 slide up the racetrack, and Watson said, thank you very much. That door swung wide open. Let's ride with Kevin Lacroix for a minute. You don't get the RPM on the backstretch because they can't put the gas pedal to the floor. 
what you saw earlier with Wallace Stacy. What happens when you do mash the gas? The back end just jumps out crossways. More tire problems this time on the GSR Zero of Glenn Styers. Glenn is really paying his dues this season in the NASCAR Pinty Series. But still smiling. Every time he gets out of that race car, he's still got a smile on his face. Don't know if DJ Kennington has a big smile on his face right now, and he can't see through the tinted visor. A couple cars ahead, though. The 46, Jamie Krizik having a great run, sitting now inside the top 10 in that 46 for a part-time driver starting at the back of the pack. He's got to be happy with this run so far. I mean, he's got the skill. We've seen that before when he's competed with us, so great job there. Let's see if Brandon Watson has anything for the race leader, Mark Antoine Cameron. Again, Watson is a short track specialist. Following along behind the GM Pie number 96, uh, Mark Antoine Cameron, and problems again on the three of uh, Brett Taylor down the back straightaway. He's off the pace, and it's again a right front corner problem. You saw the ooh, run and hanging. That was a close call off of turn number four. Glenn Styers and Wallace Stacy narrowly missing that three machine. So Cameron still leads Watson as we continue under green with Glute and Lacroix. The top four cars have paired off two by two. A couple of dancing partners here. These are important laps for these racers because we're coming up on the halfway break, but it's going to let the teams know what their cars will do after a long green flag run. Let's send it down pit side. Todd is there. Todd? Green flag stop for Brett Taylor. Another right front tire has gone down through having to look now to see what the problem is as to why those tires keep going flat. What they could be looking at too, Dave, is the sway bar link. When you cut a right front down, the car lays down, and the first thing it's going to drag on is the bolt that holds that sway bar in. If that comes off, you're in, you're in trouble. Yeah, for sure. As we take a look at where the Western drivers are running, we saw Jamie Krizik inside the top 10. And there's Chantal Kalika having a solid run, currently sitting in 18th position after starting 17th. And their high hopes are for Saskatoon. They've got Nick Jewell on top of the pit box calling the shots. She just wants to survive tonight's race. One driver who didn't is with Tom. Fred Taylor out of the car, a couple of flat tires, but obviously there's another problem underneath that's put you out. I don't know. I think I broke the... I must have rubbed off the sway bar heim or something. It is what it is, right? It's racing. Um, I'd like to thank all my sponsors, though. North Country, TCB, Fast Eddie, Chalkwell Authentics. All the fans that came out today, you know, it's I had like 50 people here from my hometown. Sucks to have this result, but it is what it is. Tough break for sure, as you see battle heating up now between the 74 and the 59, but we are getting reports of some fluid down on the racetrack. Well, I think we just saw McQuaw get into it down in one and two. You either have to drive on the flat. There's oil on the track, big oil. And you can hear the reports from drivers. There's oil on the track, and it's right there. You can see it from our vantage point in one and two. So these drivers are having to either run above it or below it, but it's a problem. It was Alex Tagliani with a report from the 18. And you can see, yeah, exactly that. They're trying to split this track of oil as we're nearing the halfway point. They are nowhere near the racing line in one and two. They're a lane and a half up because it's the only safe place to be away from that fluid. Look at all over the windshield, it's right in laps of it. Yeah, and we can tell you now, it appears to be coming from the 71 and by the smell, it smells like rear end fluid or grease of some sort. These drivers are just waiting for that halfway break. It can't come soon enough. Again, Kevin Lacroix all by himself running way up on the high side of the racetrack. You're almost running a wet line like you would if it was raining on a road course. <laughs> You're absolutely right. The yellow is displayed. And that should be the halfway break. It'll give safety crews time to clean up the fluid on the racetrack. And it'll give us time to have that reset and see what the teams are going to do. There you can see the culprit, the 71 of Ryan Cathcart, the OK Tire Dodge, as he tucks down to the inside. No smoke from the back end of that car. It's pretty much all out on the racetrack. This is where Todd Lewis earns his paycheck. Todd, take it away. 
signal has been given. Crews now go to work on the car. No changes planned for the 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron. No practice, just qualifying. He has driven to the front. The nine car of Brandon Watson, they will make some small adjustments to try to give him a little bit more in the second half of this race. Checked in with the 74 team as well. Kevin Lacroix, no changes expected, just fuel and four general tires. You can see the spotters high atop those seat cans in turn number one. They get a bit of a break as well. But when we come back, it'll be the second half of the Bayer 300. The Bayer 300 on TSN is brought to you by WeatherTech. Laser measured for a perfect fit. Nothing protects your car, truck, or SUV like WeatherTech. By eBay Motors, the right parts and the right vehicles at the right prices. Let's ride. And by Quickwick, the world's number one fire starter. So that first half gives these teams and drivers a chance to see what they've got out there. Now it's time to put it in play. Before we do go back to green, let's check in one more time with our Todd Lewis. Todd? Just before we go green, the eight dives to pit road. They believe it is a fuel pump problem for Raphael Lassard. He remains along pit road as the field approaches the green flag. And that's a kick in the shins for that team. They were finally having a good run here, figuring out that car. I was thinking the same thing, only the kick was a little higher because they've gone <laughs> all the way across the country for this. They really have, but we're getting set to go back to green after the halfway break. It's up, we're back underway. Now remember, new tires on these race cars, that'll make them a little bit slippery, and the oil dry on the racetrack, and you, wow, both of them are front running cars. Mark Antoine Cameron gets loose. Thank goodness Brandon Watson was there to catch him. I think that speedy dry made things very slippery in turn number four. You can still see the dust being kicked up. One and two, and now down the back straight away. Kevin Lacroix all over the back end of that number 96, applying the pressure behind them. Gary Clute and Brandon Watson. What a great job Clute's doing. Longtime partnership with his crew chief, John Fletcher. Fletcher is quite happy with where they're running this season. The nine of Brandon Watson with his dad, Tim Watson, acting as his spotter. And oh. look at that, Tagliani makes contact with the nine, and they continue down the back straight away. Oh, my goodness. Into the wall goes the 18 as Watson continues on, but under caution. That's the crash that just wouldn't end. No, it started all the way in turn two and finished in turn three. Let's see what kind of view we have of this. The two were racing for position well inside the top ten. So Watson was up on the outside, Tagliani trying to fill that hole. Watson coming coming down, Tag wanted the spot, but this is what's strange to me. It's right on board, Trayton Lapsovich. And you can see Tag jumps up over that left front tire and then just... Uh, some, there's a lot of things bent in the front. Leave the hood on if you can, just pull that fender and nose off, man. On. All that work to secure that body work on the 18 for not the front end getting ripped off now after contact out on track. The 18 will try to return to the battle once they secure all those hoses and remove the body work. And that was Scott Stackley saying try to leave the hood on if you can. But I don't know if they can. We saw the whole crew pulling the hood pins out. Brandon Watson with damage as well. Let's have another look. Watson looking for that hole behind the 59, and the 18 was already there. So they're racing for the same real estate, but then it just never ended. That, that was what was strange. I mean, you're going to see drivers make contact, but I don't understand why that crash went all the way down the backstretch. And this is going to hurt Tag because, remember, he came into this race fourth in points, and now he's going laps down, sitting on pit lane. There's a lot of work for that crew to do. Brandon Watson, it looks like they were able to make repairs and keep that car on the racetrack. We're back under green, and Kevin Lacroix with a big run on the high side. Now he's on the clean side. All that speedy dry is down low, so this might actually benefit the driver of the ESR wheels, number 74. You're absolutely right. I mean, he was running up there before the break, so he's comfortable clear, clear, up in that clear. line. But Cameron is just so fast on the bottom of that 96. Contact Kevin Lacroix into the left rear corner of Mark Antoine Cameron. He let him save that car. He sure did. Lacroix backing out of it. He's been digging on the back bumper of that 96 ever since the break. 
I mean, we can't give him too much credit because he's the reason he had to collect the car. The car but of and solution got, too. He, he, yeah, problem, solution, let's carry on. Look at Clute now. He's going to hang out in third place, and he's like, all right, I don't want to mix it up with you guys because who knows what's going to happen. And how about Dexter Stacy in that 92? Has he been one of the most exciting drivers all season to watch? Works his way up into the top five. Now Andrew Ranger gets to the inside, but Stacy has been a one-man highlight reel. And you have to look in fourth spot, too. The car they're chasing is the 80 of Donald Teach. Remember, he was a lap down early in this race. We talked about, you know, cautions can give you a new breath of life in a long race like this one. That's exactly what's happened to the 80. They certainly can. And Donald Teach, as we ride on board with DJ Kennington, who dropped back in the first half of this race, Donald Teach knows. He says, I need a good finish. He is an aggressive racer, speaking of which, here goes Kevin Lacroix to the inside. But Teach says, I need solid finishes out here. I need to keep the car in one piece. So with Kevin Lacroix heading across the stripe, he will be credited as your race leader. 11 lead changes here today. That is the most ever at Edmonton International Raceway and the most since 2018 in the NASCAR Pinty Series at Jucasa. It's been amazing to watch. I mean, so much so much action. A car will be fast battling for the lead. Then we'll watch them drop back all the way out of the top 10. Tip of the hat to our stats guy extraordinaire, Bryce, for coming up with that little nugget. That makes it. Can't hear you, buddy. No, that's not fixing it. Not fixing it. Leaders back five. Leaders back five. That's the 20 of... Trayton Lapsovich, who's off the pace, Ken Kachu talking to his driver, and you've heard Lapsovich saying there's no fixing it. He's down pit lane. Almost. He's there, heading yeah. that way. That was, it, Ken was just saying the leaders are only behind by five. I'm surprised they weren't able to clean the windshield a little better during that break as Lapsovich, that car sounds horrible. Yeah, it's chugging along and maybe two it's cylinders. Dying on me. I'm coming down. It's now, yeah, okay, you can hear you, the RGC Sports Quick Quick number 20. Of Lapsovich heading for pit lane, staying under green though. So another of the championship contenders taking a knock today. Man, oh man, Trey Lapsovich showed signs of speed earlier on, but on pit road losing laps. Donald T up into the third spot of that number 80 machine, nestled between two GM Pie sponsored cars. Got a blue collar job as the driver of the 80, Donald T. Todd is in the pits where the 20 has come to a stop. Todd? Yeah, guys, that 20 car came slowly along pit road. It was not sounding good on track. They're going to check the battery and see if that might be the issue, but uh, the crew is not really moving very quickly right now. That's a painful change, the battery. Yeah. It's tough to get it. It's back there behind the driver in the left rear corner of the race car, and obviously... Trayton Lapsovich is losing laps as he sits there in the pit, so a, a solid day going to waste for the driver from Grimsby, Ontario. Chantal Kalika getting up out of the way of the leaders as they buzz by once again, and the battle at the front has picked up one more time as Kevin Lacroix had taken it, and now the 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron wants it back. And remember, there had been some contact. Kevin Lacroix got into the left rear Cameron, gave him a chance to, to save it, does Cameron remember the time when he gave him a chance to save it, or does he remember the time that he got hit? Do racers remember at all when there's good things that happen? Alex Tagliani back on the racetrack, and that number 18 is Andrew Ranger massaging the back bumper of Donald Teach's number 80. This is where we expected to see the number 27 of Andrew Ranger here. He's driver with two wins at Edmonton International Raceway. We expected him to contend again here today. He does a great job on this little short track. I can't even understand why he is so good here, but always has solid runs as he continues to keep the pressure on Donald Teach, and Teach gave up the bottom. You know what I do love about Andrew Ranger on these short, tight ovals is that he's never afraid to use the outside groove. Often Captain Highliner getting out there saying, I'll try it, yep. I'm gonna make up time. He'll find a way, that's what he does. A little further ahead. Andrew Ranger's back, baby, go get him. That's Joe Chisholm Jr. after he cleared the 80 of Donald Teach saying, go get him, these two leaders are just ahead. And the more Cameron battles with Kevin Lacroix, and that's a bit of a story right there. You look at the right front of Cameron, that shows sign of, of already making contact. We've only been in the second half of this race about 40 laps. 
So now Lacroix will leave that door open. He'll let the 96 float through. So Cameron back to the lead here in the Bayer 300. Another lead change, which is unbelievable. Great battles here at Edmonton International Raceway. Edmonton International Raceway first opened in 1967 as a dirt track. In 1994, it was paved. Ron and Loretta Fearing have run it since 1995 and currently hosts the NASCAR Pinty Series and the Bayer 300 as Mark Antoine Cameron leads after starting fifth here today. We're going to take a look through the top five. Cameron started fifth as running first. Kevin Lacroix in that 74 machine. It's our last chance to see him in that red and white paint scheme. Started second, currently running second, but he's been a little higher, he's been a little lower. And there you can see the number 27 of Andrew Ranger. There's one of the big movers and shakers on the day, starting way back in 10th position. And he's worked his way up to third after going a lap down at one point. Making his way around Chantel Kalika in the 43. Let's look at our fourth place driver. And who's this? Where did he come from? <laughs> the Castro Lights Dodge, DJ Kennington from St. Thomas, Ontario. He's been at the front, he's been at the back, working his way back through. But what is different about that 17? There is not a mark on that race car. Yeah. For that someone who has been battling for the lead and all the way back to the tail end of the lead lap, how do you do that? Donald Teach, as we mentioned, was strong in practice earlier on today. Started back in 11th, so another one of those drivers had to roll up his sleeves. He's currently sitting in fifth, and he, too, had to battle back from a lap down. So a tip of the hat to our director, Steve Ryan, for taking us through the fields. Of course, our crew here at NASCAR on TSN doing a wonderful job on the Western Road Trip. Short track racing is a funny thing, Dave. It's a contradiction. So we ride on board with Kevin Lacroix. You have to be so aggressive, you can't let an opportunity pass by, but if you're not patient, you're never gonna be successful. So I don't know how you mash those two things together, but that's what these drivers do, and at the end of 300 laps, it's the one who finds that perfect balance of aggression and patience, knowing when to push the limit, who finds victory lane. Let's take a look at some of the drivers at the front of the field. You have Cameron, you have Lacroix, you have Andrew Ranger, all drivers who cut their racing teeth on road racing circuits. And now they excel on short tracks. A lot of the same tools that you learn driving a road race car, you can take onto a short track and you can excel. DJ Kennington's hand still so very quiet behind the wheel. You've got to go back all the way to the eighth spot to find a driver who has not won in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Right? So all of these drivers at the front, it's not a fluke. Now the 46 of Jamie Krizik on the inside as the leaders go through on the outside. That's something they're told in the driver's meeting. The faster cars will go by you on the outside. Just hold your line down low. That's what Krizik is doing, but the battle at the front is heating up. Welcome back to the Bayer 300 on TSN. Up at the booth, I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross. Todd Lewis is pit side for us here today. And it looks like Cameron has been able to stretch his lead just a little bit. Coming off of turn number four, he went right down over, the, over those rumble strips. I don't see anybody else able to keep their car that low on corner exit. That 96 machine is just rotating like crazy. You can see the 20 of Trayton Lapsovich is back out on the track after he thought his day would be, would be done. He's about 13 laps back of the leader now, so just trying to salvage as many points as he can. Well, let's remember this, he's running 17th. If he can make up a spot or two before the end of the race, every point matters as we ride along with LP Dumoulin. Dumoulin sitting in sixth position in the WeatherTech Belmar, number 47. And there you can see, it, it seems to be as they work lap traffic, because it's so tight that the lead battle closes up significantly. And then once Cameron is able to get into the open air, he stretches his legs and opens that lead again. Yeah, I'd say that's a fair observation, but look at how low he is off of turn number four. And of course, that time, Kevin Lacroix able to keep his car equally as low as Cameron to the inside of a pretty quick Rafael Lassar, but Lassar going to give him plenty of room. So Lassard, after having troubles right around the halfway break, he is another driver who's 
several laps down, about 13 laps down of your race leader. So really no point for him to fight the leaders too hard. 50 laps remain. It's a Saturday night special here in Edmonton. And now the question is, how much do you have left in reserve for these drivers? How hard were you on your brakes? Did you wear out your general tires now? Well, Kevin Lacroix is becoming a much better tactician than he ever was. Andrew Ranger, lots of experience. DJ Kennington, the question mark is Cameron. How much of that 96 machine has he used up? And how much does he have in reserve for this final push to the checkered flag? Look at who Cameron is behind now. The number nine of Brandon Watson. And again, the lead battle has closed up just a couple car lengths between Cameron and the GM Pie number 96. And the Lacroix shooting number 74 of Kevin Lacroix. This is trouble for the race leader, Mark Antoine Cameron. He is up behind the eighth place car of Brandon Watson. And Watson already would be frustrated with the problems that he's had. So this is when things get treacherous for a race leader. I'm not suggesting Brandon Watson would do anything foolish. I'm just saying you have to understand your surroundings in this game. And there's LP Dumont up on the outside. A couple of good race cars that don't want to go a lap down. 96 this side. Inside. That's Jordan Buster in the 40s, or the spotter for the 47 of LP Jumley, who's dropped back now. Remember, he was running in sixth spot. Now he's back to eighth as both Clute and Watson have made their way through. Yeah, something seems amiss on the 47 of LP Dumoulin, and Brandon Watson is picking him off and laying him down there in the number nine. Clute now has lost a position as Watson continues to stay on the lead lap. Watson knows it's time to turn up the wick. He's looking in that mirror. He's hearing from a spotter. Knows the leader is behind. You're trying to stay on the lead lap. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's able to cut through lap traffic. We know that car is fast. He was at the front earlier on. Order. Clear up top, clear up top. Jordan Buster talking to his driver, LP Dumo, and I believe is what we just heard. As Cameron's still able to keep that car glued to the bottom on corner exit. I get entry, I get through the center, but the fact that he can still stay that low coming off the turn and carry as much speed as he is, is pretty amazing. Look at Lacroix now. He's way up on the outside as Cameron tries to dive onto the flat underneath the nine of Brandon Watson. Now the two leaders will duel side by side. In through three and four. Oh, it's a mess. And there's contact. Around goes Lacroix as Andrew Ranger poked the nose. There is a lot to unwrap there. Oh, wow. What as, a parking lot off of turn four. As you hear the crowd react to what just happened, Kevin Lacroix pulled move to go to the outside. Let's look at this replay. He's trying to take the lead. Look at what's in front of him. So they were already three wide. Now you're almost four wide. Lacroix dives to the inside and contact is made. I, there is such thing as a race and deal, and I would say that's a race and deal. But let's ride on board with Andrew Ranger. He was committed. He was there. There's no way he could have avoided it. And Ranger did the polite thing. He backed out like he hit the brakes instead of finishing, pushing Lacroix all the way around. And probably saved Lacroix from hitting the inside wall, too. I'll bet you he did. Onto the grass. He managed to stay off the wall, even with grass there. So a big time save, but a big shakeup at the front of the field. And there you can see the tire mark on the nose of the GM Pie number 27, but Ranger now in second spot. So it's the two teammates out of the GM Pie shop, one and two. It looks like it's only gonna cost Lacroix one position, but what damage is there to the race car? We're gonna find out right after this break. What a treat we've been given here at Edmonton International Raceway in the Bayer 300. As we continue with race number six for the NASCAR Pinty Series here in 2022, it's Cameron and Ranger, two teammates, who will lead them back to green with 31 laps to go as they hit the stripe. Ranger got a big launch on the outside. He'll nose ahead of his teammate, Mark Antoine Cameron, into turn number one, but Cameron getting such a good drive off the corner. Play bottom, play bottom. There you go, clear, 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 clear. Hell yeah. Let's go. Single file. I'm a little bit surprised to see that single file settle in so quickly. The hole was there. I mean, Ranger would know very quickly if he was going to be able to make it work on the outside. As soon as he knows it's not going to work, get me to the bottom as quick as you can. Now you saw Lacroix get to the back bumper of the 27 of Andrew Ranger. 
And you have to think, is Lacroix thinking that Ranger just turned me or are they cool right now? You know, that's what you have to wonder. There's spotters up in the spotter stand. This is when one spotter has to go to the other spotter and have some communication. The crew chiefs probably aren't going to do it. The drivers certainly can't do it. But we'll find out pretty soon if there's any animosity. And we didn't see any waving out of the windows with especially one finger in particular, so it seems like they might be okay. But Ranger is all he can handle as the back end of the number 27 has been hanging out there just a little bit. And again, he's one to use that inside curbing, the flat part of the racetrack, and it seems to be working to his advantage. Kevin Lacroix is doing the opposite of that. He's taking a little bit of a late entry. Watch, he won't get down to the curbing until at least halfway through the corner. Ranger starts the corner on the curbing. And that's just these drivers knowing exactly when they want to hit it to get the car to turn as Ranger giving some love to Mark Antoine Cameron. Yeah, totally. Just roughing up the back bumper a little bit. 24 laps to go here. Set him up. Open up that entry. Clear by one. Open up that entry. Just make that hole if you need to. Whoa. Speaking of opening up an entry, Donald T just gets to the inside of DJ Kennington. Brandon Watson was almost a lap down. Now he's going to race his way into the top five. Brandon Watson almost had a car on top of him at one point in the GMS Chevrolet. And what a comeback he has been having here today. He looks so calm. I mean, you can't see his facial expression, but judging by his hands. Right on you there. Looking inside, inside. He's there, inside. Inside, he's by himself. Clear to the bottom, clear to the bottom. Clear, clear, clear. Kevin Lacroix getting what he needed. He saw the 96 driving away. The 27 didn't have anything for him. It was time for him to make his move. 20 laps to go. Yeah, it, it just seemed to be the back end hung out a little bit, open up that door for the 74 to go through. So now does Kevin Lacroix have what he needs to catch the 96? He was quicker before being turned to bring up the last caution. Three quarters of a second, 0. 0.752, the gap between first and second. That is a pretty big gap to make up. It doesn't sound like much, but you're talking cars that are so evenly matched. Watson now up to fourth as Kennington and the 80 of Donald Teach battle side by side. There's Lapsovich in there too. Remember, he's several laps down in 16th position. And Lapsovich is still racing to try to pick up one or two spots. He's picked up a spot. He's up to 16th. If he can get past the zero machine at Glenn's tires, that'll move him up to 15th. So it is worth still going hard, still trying to bring down your lap times because, again, not only are you learning the track, but you're picking up spots and picking up valuable points. I'll tell you, looking at timing and scoring right now, I think the fastest car on the racetrack is Brandon Watson in the number nine. He is coming, still 2.2 seconds back of your race leader, but the gap at the front is getting smaller as well. Look at now, half a second the last time they crossed a strike. Kevin Lacroix doing what he can to close that gap on the 96 of Cameron. Now's the time to poke those elbows out and get to work. Try and get everything you can out of this race car. 14 laps to go, now 13 as they click off another lap. There's a little bit of traffic ahead of Cam Rand. He's got Chantel Kalika, who has done a great job today of getting out of the way of the lead lap cars, keeping the nose clean on that 43. Smart driver, former sportsman champion at Sutherland Automotive Speedway, where the next stop will be for the NASCAR Pinty Series. Cameron drives it down into the corner. Lacroix, 0.8 seconds. He's actually lost a little bit of ground to the race leader as it's going to be 10 laps to go this time when they cross the strike. Long runs are where that 96 really starts to shine. It appears as though the 74 is a little bit better on the shorter runs. This is the 64, the Leland-sponsored entry of Mark Gilly just ahead of your race leader. Those three lap cars in front of the race leader, Cameron, could make the difference in winning or losing. He's got to get them at the right time. He's got to make his moves and not lose too much speed because Kevin Lacroix is going to be hammered down closing in. Dilly's a veteran sitting in 11th position. He paced that car to the yellow line. Look, and he's even using the apron to let the leaders go by. He doesn't want to play a role in the outcome of this race. And what happens the longer you're around in this sport? Mark Dilly has lost races because of that, so he's not going to be the driver to cost the driver a good finish as Brandon Watson closing the gap. 
on Andrew Rangers 27. Yeah, he hasn't been able to really close in on the leader, but he is definitely reeled in third place in Andrew Ranger. That car is on rails right now. As badly as it was beaten up at one point, it's moving. Speaking of beating up race cars, they go around Alex Tagliani in the 18. He's been struggling out there, but churning laps out in that Viagra MTN number 18. Tagliani, 40 laps down, currently in 18th. Remember, he came into this race fourth in points, so this will be a hit for sure. Oh! Oh, look at this! Into the 9! Goes Tagliani up into the wall. Goes the 18 as Watson, who is looking for a way around the 27, finds himself looking in the wrong direction. That was deja vu all over again. The 18 and the 9 making contact. Possible payback for that original incident? I really want to have another look at that, Dave. I, I saw what I saw, and it, it didn't look good. But I'd like to have another look and, and see how this shook down. Again, it's not so much how it started, it's how it finished. Let's take another look. So there's the 18 on the inside, the 9 going by up high, in through 1 and 2. It, it's it's the speed Tagliani was carrying into the beyond the contact that makes me more suspicious. Let's ride with Trayton Lapsovich. He gets a good view. He has to stop to avoid. And the car stalls, but you can see there's not much room down on the inside there for Tagliani, but you're right. There wasn't much take after the give. Right. Once the contact is made, just like we saw with Kevin Lacroix uh, earlier on with 96, you back out and let him save it. In this case, it was continue the spin. In fact, so far that it sent Tagliani into the fence. Cleanup continues in turn number two. When we return, a green-white checker. Some pretty exciting finishes so far in 2022 in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Get ready for another one because we're about to set the stage for a green white checker to decide this race. This race has had more lead changes than any other race in the history of this racetrack with this series. Is there one more in store? Cameron and Lacroix will power their way in through one and two. Rangers right there, so is Donald Teague. Ranger right on the bumper of Mark Antoine Cameron. Didn't make contact there in one and two. Look at the run, Kevin Lacroix, white flag in the air. Lacroix does have a nose up on the outside. Can he stick it through one and two? No, he can't. Look at the 96 power on the inside. His only choice is to try to make that outside work, but it's going to be Mark Antoine Cameron over Kevin Lacroix and Andrew Ranger. What a race here in Edmonton. Donald Teach and L.P. Dubelay will round out the top five, but congratulations all around in the 96 bid. No practice this afternoon for Mark Antoine Cameron in that 96. Robin McCluskey putting a car under them that he could win with. NASCAR overtime as we take a look at the top 20 results. And you look, DJ Kennington, a seventh place finish. Dexter Stacy a top 10, so is Jamie Krizik. Impressive for Jamie Krizik in that 46. They've got to be happy. J.P. Bergeron fought back after a brutal start to finish 11th. Wallace Stacy 13th. Glenn Steyer 16th. And Trayton Lapsovich, after that problem, winds up 17th. You can see the 18 of Alex Tagliani coming home in 18th position with a battered and bruised race car. But the driver who shone like a diamond here today and led the most laps is now in victory lane. Todd? What a workout for Mark Antoine Cameron to score the victory. Second time this year that he has brought that 96 home to victory lane. Yeah, that's the car. It did it once again. Yeah. What a ride and what a drive at the end. That head-to-head -head battle with the 74 was unbelievable. Yeah, Kevin was uh, really, really fast. We we made a change uh, halfway through. We made the car a little bit too tight. So I was struggling at the end, but that win is deserved to my team. We missed all the, the practice session this morning because of uh, the issue of the car with the rear end. We missed all the practice session. We qualified five. And that car was amazing. That guy over there, that crew chief over there, he's an amazing guy. Take your time right now. Come on here. He's the best. He's bringing in Robin McCluskey, and this is going to be a team celebration and a team shower right now. Mark Antoine Cameron with win number two on the season. This is awesome.
This is for my dad. And Robin McCluskey, he's been around this sport for quite a while, and he deserves that credit he's given. There's always someone great behind a successful race car driver. Some of these teams name their race cars. That one can be named Rocket Ship because it has been every step of the way so far in 2022. Cameron, two wins, both coming on ovals. Kevin Lacroix with a runner-up finish. You were giving it everything you had, and that's one of the best head-to-head -head battles we've seen in a long time. Uh, it was uh, was very nice. It was uh, we bumped each other a few times. So it was clean, and it was just uh, those fun uh, fun races, uh, short tracks. So. You know, uh, we're battling in the championship show, so I should not be happy about it. But uh, it was a nice race, so I'm happy. And the uh, 96 car was quick, so it's uh, we're happy with second. Congratulations. Thank you. Arva Lawson from Bayer, regional sales and account manager, presenting the hardware and a bottle of champagne to Mark Antoine Cameron. She wanted to get that away so she could get away, but it changed again atop the point standings. Mark Antoine Cameron back out in front, but just by two. Yeah, and he and Kevin Lacroix with a big gap, 15 points back to Gary Clute in third. Another driver who came up just a little bit short today, standing by with Todd. Andrew Ranger, he had to battle through some issues today, but still to come home with a podium finish, a strong result. Yeah, exactly. We start 10, and uh, we were pretty fast in the fa first half of the race, and uh, we have a flat tire, came on the pit, started on the back, uh, fight a little bit with the guys, and finally finish in the, with the third position. So uh, very good for us, for the Payet Chevrolet team. They did a great job, and uh, it's another podium for us. Ron and Loretta Thiering, they're in victory lane. It, this is as relaxed as I have seen Ron Thiering in all the years we've been coming here. The Bayer 300 has been brought to you by Delta Bingo and Gaming. By AGI, a global leader in the world's food infrastructure. And by General Tire, the official tire of the NASCAR Pinty Series. Our Western Swing, one race down, two races to go in Saskatoon, Dave, but they're going to have a tough time beating this one. Man, the races have been so tight so far this year. Can't wait for the next one. It'll be the Leland Twin 125s, and we'll see you there. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.